Hello, this is Arthur Hill with StockCharts.com. You are tuned in to the video edition of the Mailbag. And today we're going to discuss the difference between on balance volume and the accumulation distribution line. So here's a chart of Broadcom and it provides some good examples of the difference between these two indicators. First of all, note that the accumulation distribution line and on balance volume are both volume based indicators. So they combine volume and price action to create an indicator that rises and falls along with the price. Sometimes these indicators do diverge from price and then we can anticipate a signal. Now the difference resides in the calculation. On balance volume simply looks at the close relative to the prior close. When the close is higher, you add volume. When the close is lower, you subtract volume. And this in essence creates a multiplier of plus one when the close is higher and minus one when the close is lower. So you'd multiply volume by plus one when the close is higher and multiply it by minus one when the close is lower. Now the reason I mention this multiplier is because that's what the accumulation distribution line does. But instead of looking at the close relative to the prior close, the accumulation distribution line looks at the close relative to the high-low range for that particular period. In this case, we're looking at days. So when the close is above the midpoint of the high-low range, that multiplier is positive. And when the close is below the midpoint, that multiplier is negative. So if you close on the exact high of the day, your multiplier is going to be plus one, just like OBV. If you close on the exact low of the day, your multiplier is going to be minus one, just like OBV. So when you close on the low and you get a minus one multiplier, then the accumulation distribution line is going to decline because volume is going to essentially be subtracted. And when you close on the high, you're going to multiply volume by plus one and the accumulation distribution line is going to rise. So now let's look at some differences. So in the first example, you can see we have a gap down and we have a close down because that bar is red. And you can see that the close is near the low end of the range. So that means the multiplier is negative. And you can see volume was very high that day. And so both OBV and the accumulation distribution line fell sharply. Now if we go to September, you can see we have a higher close because that bar is black. But you can see the close is on the low. So that means the accumulation distribution line would have had a multiplier of minus one. Whereas OBV would have had a multiplier of plus one because the close was higher than the prior close. And you can see that OBV did in fact edge higher while the accumulation distribution line moved lower. And now we have the most recent gap where Broadcom gap down and closed down because that bar is red and volume was high. So you can see OBV declined, but you can also see that the close is near the high end of the range. So the accumulation distribution line actually rose. So which one is better? Well, neither really. They're both have, they both have their strengths and weaknesses, and it really boils down to a personal preference. But one thing you might consider is using both because then you're going to get the full picture for volume. So if you get an upside breakout in both the on balance volume indicator and accumulation distribution, you're going to see that means strong buying pressure and that's positive for the stock. Whereas if you have downtrends in both, that suggests that selling pressure is winning the day and that would be negative for the stock. So you can read more about these indicators in our chart school and I would suggest that you test them out for yourself also look at some of the other volume based, based indicators that we have on the Sharp Charts workbench. Thanks very much for tuning in to this video and have a great day.